Hello, Japanime fanimes. Welcome to Wii Boomers, the only vintage anime review podcast from Gigaboots.com. I'm Danime Japanime, and with me is Bob. Bang. Bang Video Games. KZ. I carry weight sometimes. Bang Excellent. Mr. Bang Feel. Are you living in the real world? And Dr. Bang Agro. Hot dog bun, not too young. <laughs> Ooh. This time on Wii Boomers, we thought it would be fun to uh, watch Cowboy Bebop before we had to watch Cowboy Bebop. <laughs> uh, but I'm going to do a thing. I'm going to start this timer on my phone, and we are not allowed to reference the Netflix series for the next 25 minutes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. We get, we get this fair. nice sanctuary from thinking about it. <laughs> yeah, I'm going I'm to need you to, like... Turn up that ringer so they can hear the, it go off. Okay. <laughs> there we, we go. know when to start blasting or crying, <laughs> whichever. Uh, it mainly just going, uh-oh. <laughs> so I started the timer. Uh, we watched uh, 26 episodes of the series, seemingly. Uh, we'll go around and ask each person what they individually watched. And I also, for the first time ever, watched the movie. That is an excellent movie, Bob. How dare you not show it to me sooner? <laughs> yeah, this is my fault. This is all your fault, definitely. <laughs> That's our Bob. That's how that works out, Bob. You should have pulled out your ratty ass DVD. <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's a real shame that didn't get released on Blu-ray uh, in the states. It did. It just. <laughs> The no, release only lasted for like a week or something. <laughs> but yeah, no, I'm going to mm. say that's not real. Uh, we're going to go to each person and ask what they watched. Uh, Bob watched uh, the entire fucking series with me and the movie. Uh, Mr. Feel, what did you watch? I watched the entire series. Uh, I, what else would I watch? That is, I don't know. Maybe you were like, time to watch Space Dandy. Uh, Dr. Agro, what did you watch? <laughs> 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 I've never had that experience in my life. Um, <laughs> No, yeah, I, I watched 1 through 26 and my ratty-ass DVD of the movie. <laughs> nice! <laughs> uh, KZ, what did you watch? I watched like half of it here with you. Uh, a few other episodes I hadn't seen in a while uh, that weren't like when I first watched it years ago where I saw it on cable and I've seen some episodes six times. <laughs> <laughs> where i would turn it on I'm like come on again <laughs> i'm gonna be honest i had that experience too but somehow there were like what was it two i think it was two episodes i had never seen yeah that episode with the the, the guy who's yeah, really wide and round i've seen that like six times yeah somehow i had never seen toys in the attic yeah that's still crazy to me <laughs> There was one other I mm. hadn't seen. It was one of uh, Jet's various, very uh, straightforward and uh, copy and pasted backstories. Uh, <laughs> I can't remember which one. I'm sorry. <laughs> Every time they go to him, he's like, this is the real reason I quit the force. <laughs> <laughs> All the stories line up, we swear. The, the fifth time, he's going to be like, my landlord evicted me. <laughs> Tr truly the uh, truly the Cole Cassidy of anime. <laughs> Jet is both 35 and 100 years old. I was just thinking about you want to know how I got these scars and it's always different. <laughs> yeah, the thought that Jet is only 35 is insane. <laughs> I mean, look at him. He looks like 58. I, I you know, yeah, he I, looks pretty old. I'd like to think he only looks that old because he has that well groomed face beard where it just comes <laughs> up over his cheekbones and stuff. Mm -hmm. Covers that cleft chin. So, well, well, you've heard that crazy, that crazy uh, science theory that's going around now, right? Where uh, millennials and Zoomers just look way younger because we're mentally man children. <laughs> like being stuck in adolescence makes our generations look younger longer. Now, I'm not trying to throw Baller. my entire graduating class under the bus, but I <laughs> looked around and no, not all of us look younger. <laughs> you live in Florida, which I feel skews the... Uh, <laughs> Excuse the excuse the the subject pool a little bit. <laughs> the skin regard. cancer rate. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe just a little. 
it's uh it's fantastic i love anytime i go back to an old anime series one that's highly respected or really anything and just go yeah this really is truly great it's it's fantastic to watch a thing and just be like nah this is uh this is two-dimensional it's rife garbage it's it's basically the genre has come so far since then that this is unremarkable this cowboy bebop is so exceptional at what it does and it's so high quality in all these different ways. Like if the thing had come out four years later or something, it'd be in. It would look so much worse because of Flash and stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, I'm I'm imagining like the Cowboy Bebop looking like the Bleach episodes we watch, and I'm just like getting <laughs> skin crawling. Oh my mm. god. Yeah, I think there's a reason that director stopped working for like 15 years or something. Yeah. It, it must be disheartening. <laughs> every year, every year, it's like. Can we make things that look good yet again? No. He's like, oh, I guess I'll come back. I guess I'll ask again next year. <laughs> he just goes, can we make things that look good again? And it's that fucking boardroom meme and he gets thrown out the window. <laughs> <laughs> like, let's check in. Gokudo? No. Okay. What's up? Witch Hunter Robin? Uh, we're kind of getting there. Uh, FMAO3? All right. All right. Although, yeah. Although, although yeah. um... He did shit Samurai Champloo, and that wasn't that long after. Yeah, yeah, that was for only, sure. That was only like six years. But then he kind of didn't do anything major until Space Dandy again. Yeah, yeah, there was mm. definitely a gap there. I, I just, this thing looks great. If you have the option to pick it up on Blu-ray and you're sitting there wondering, will I really notice the difference? Yes. Yes. you also oh, yeah. notice anytime mm -hmm. they have a computer special effects scene. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you will. <laughs> so, if you, if you... I doubted the power of Blu-rays, mm -hmm. you know, compared to streaming things. Yeah. So if, if you audience are also confused, go to YouTube and look for, specifically search for JoJo Blu-ray comparison, because someone did some magic to make the Blu-ray look like it should look on YouTube for yeah. just a couple clips. And I'm like, what do you fucking mean it looks like this? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's absolutely not. What are you not. talking about? It, it, it looks... It looks the way those bullshit 60 frame interpolated things are trying to look. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Where it looks so exceptionally good, you have to wonder what sort of magic sorcery went into it. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, no, it's it's really exceptional. It's a really good listen. Uh however, it is funny how all of the dialogue for every single episode is balanced for about uh how do, how do I phrase this in a way that isn't hyper-specific to high-end audio setups? The, the intro and outro are a good 20 decibels louder <laughs> than yeah. the normal dialogue. So I'm sitting there, I balance for an episode, and then the sax uh, uh, assaults me at the end of an episode. Yeah, the intended effect. <laughs> yeah, it's like when we're watching Bleach and I get assaulted by the current ending we're on. Yeah. This no, what's even worse is like you know how on, on your Blu-ray the menu will play like oh, random yeah. bits of jazz? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, the DVD version of that same release that I have has the same shitty thing that a lot of DVDs of anime do where they will just play the fucking intro song yep. on the menu. Uh, but it's it's even louder than it is <laughs> in the rest of the show. <laughs> It's like a fucking saxophone gun going off. <laughs> it's it's five hundred percent bass. <laughs> <laughs> Why is everything vibrating in my room? This menu's deep fried. That's strange. I wonder what that's about. I uh, you know, even though there's a certain thing that made watching this generate ideas in my brain. No, Dan, you can't. Talk I'm not. About I'm it. not. <laughs> Oh, what are you uh, talking about? Even with that hanging over it, mm. exceptional experience going back and watching all of this. Really, really good. Uh, I did not watch enough of the Jet episodes together back in the day to realize they just invented like four different layers of backstory for this guy who is just p former policeman man. It's really good because he has like first episode. They're like, yeah, it was a woman who broke his heart. That's when he stopped being a policeman. And then the next time they're like, and the and the force was corrupt, and his partner betrayed him. <laughs> yeah, Jet, Jet Black is the focus point for all hard boiled noir. Yes, in this universe. Yes, <laughs> yes, it's really good. He, he's he's a time traveler, you see. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> He's lived many parallel lives that have all led to this moment. It, it, it's really inspiring to where they're, they're just, the director just is just like, well, I want to do this noir thing with him, but I already gave him a backstory. Good thing I don't care. Yeah. Yeah, you, I, I think I've only ever watched all of this in order one other time. Mm -hmm. So that I did already have that a little bit of how weird Jet's backstory is together, but seeing it again this close together is a little okay. rough. Which of his backstory things are contradicting? Uh, they just have, like, each one of them has this air of, this was the reason why. Mm. Well, what if they all happened on the same day? It was a, it was a very bad day where his wife <laughs> left him. I, I figured it was about a rough week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Also, uh, what was it, Bob? There was something about that's how he lost his arm that made us go, wait, <laughs> how does that team time up with his wife leaving him? I'm so confused. Yeah, I think he has his arm when his wife leaves him. And mm -hmm. then then we see the thing where he loses his arm, which I presume happens in that six months that he's trying to figure out if he should leave the force. Uh, yeah, <laughs> so so when you piece it together, right? Yeah, technically worse. It's just he, insane. He's like, yes. <laughs> then she left and I kept the watch and I told myself I would stay there hoping she would come back until the watch stopped going and then one day it stopped so i left also i was <laughs> shot to death in the street barely survived lost an arm <laughs> and i got, just, I got so, diarrhea so i had never seen all of cowboy bebop before this i had seen four episodes that's like insane. caught them caught them on well here's the thing i have fucking adhd <laughs> it's hard to sit down and watch a thing and i didn't have cable in my room Oh, oh, okay. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah that do it. Because yeah. that was hard. Yeah. I, I, ha I had a computer. I had a computer later on. And before that, I just had like a DVD player and game consoles. Mm -hmm. So I had seen uh, I had seen the first two episodes. I had seen, you know, him chasing the guy using the red eye and the one with where they get a uh, Ian. Mm. I had seen Mushroom Samba. <laughs> uh, good. Yeah, everyone. Essential. <laughs> and, yeah. and I forgot. I forget which number the last one is, but it's the one where uh, where Faye is talking about her backstory, where she wakes up in the hospital. Oh yeah, yeah. And, like has been frozen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I didn't I didn't know that just like every eight episodes, a character would get like a backstory episode that just seemed <laughs> weird and out of place. That was great. I actually I love every character backstory episode. Uh, 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 jets are enjoyable, but I wouldn't say I love them. <laughs> I really like the first one, but that's more because of the music. Oh, I really like the first one. Yeah, like that. that I, thing I should was come just... out right now and mm -hmm. say that I'm I'm the biggest jet stand in the fucking world. <laughs> <laughs> so every one of those episodes is a delight to me. Fair. Yeah. Jet you're Jet smart. is Jet is really good, and those episodes do give him like a time. To not just be exasperated at everyone else. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I enjoy getting to see Jet alone and him talking to uh, former allies, question mark. Uh, it's just by the third one of them, I'm like, and then Jet leaves the hollow deck, and he was like, that was a fun time. I'm glad I made this thing based on a book I read. <laughs> <laughs> that is how it feels a little bit, just a little bit. I really enjoyed the one like Ed backstory where we meet Ed's super Chad father. Yes. <laughs> yes. God, who is just, is who is just casually one handed defeating Spike. Yeah, I think his <laughs> I think his bio readout was something like six foot four, three hundred and sixty three pounds. It's yeah. all muscle. He's just, yeah. He's too big. Because <laughs> like I, body, personality, presence. <laughs> yeah, we read yeah, the six weight. Six four seems low. He looks like eight feet tall <laughs> when they portray him <laughs> yeah, in the show. We saw the weight, and I'm like, this dude isn't wide, Dan. How tall is he? Nine feet. <laughs> Like he's dwarfing Spike fucking Spiegel, who is a scarecrow. <laughs> it's like Spike Spike Spiegel is fighting Spider versus Kingpin all of a sudden. Yeah, yeah. That dude's like if the Rock was two feet taller. <laughs> I think all the Faye backstory episodes are actually really good. Like, they're some of my favorites. Even the ones that are only kind of that like the vhf episodes so one of my favorite episodes oh bob that was that was a beta it was a beta, yes. it was a beta. beta max it yeah they do, beta a, max. Whole, they do a whole spiel about how beta max was better which is a thing i i know because i have a relative who is a beta max person oh that's like, funny fucking, it's glad to see I'm those people know. survive i'm fu I fu it's like i fucking know this this format was obsolete before i was born <laughs> Yeah, that was pretty good that even the future has video otaku. 
<laughs> you can't escape. <laughs> they're too strong to die. <laughs> <laughs> they're, they're seriously that bitter about the format war 80 years later. <laughs> So something I really didn't expect in Cowboy Bebop mm -hmm. was how often they bring up, yeah, this guy got plastic surgery to change his race. Oh, yeah. To hide Constantly. from the police. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. They yes. have magic surgery in the future. That shit's awesome. Uh -huh. They have the best doctors. I started to have a stroke when they were like, okay, when Spike like adjusts his weird space monocle mm. looking at a guy yeah. oh, like, God. And, he, and, and he just changes into another guy of a different race and it's like match, match. I'm like, how, to, how to do that how has that not been used for a meme I, I, I will always have a stroke over the dude who's like uh, I need to blend in turn me into Kareem Abdul-Jabbar yes that is what I was about to bring up he's like yeah I really like that movie so I want to be nine feet tall <laughs> You rewatched the episode, like, wait, Hakeem was his name before when he was a ginger? <laughs> right? I know, that kills me! <laughs> what? You know, I never really considered that part of this entire plot. <laughs> Look, this is a sequel to Baki, so they've just enhanced the surgery for her lengthening bones. <laughs> no! <laughs> I do like that uh, one episode, she has the person from her past who uh, was her lawyer, right? Mm -hmm. uh, come back and, and she's like, how did you do that? And he's like, well, they, they do uh, fat injections. And then they just stare at each other. He goes, well, you see, they go in the armpit, right? <laughs> and she's like, that's not what I meant. <laughs> I was like, Jesus, H. That, that episode might have like the most insane scene in the whole show. Mm -hmm. Where Faye's like, that's a kettle. That's a monitor. <laughs> that's that. <laughs> And the guy's like, no, uh, the TV's actually a washing machine and clothes explode out of it. And he's like, the kettle's actually a face oh, face washer and it opens in some really unbelievable way to, you can stick your face in. And I'm just sitting here like, w wh why'd they change? How, wh why? <laughs> For this one scene to upset Faye. <laughs> it's how, how, is a how is a society, did we get to the point where washing machines now look like a flat screen TV somehow? Uh, they look, do look, feel. The gay accident changed everything. <laughs> yeah, it totally did. Also, uh, I think they just do this to gaslight every person they bring back. <laughs> it's like a future Rama pit. It is, 100%. When you realize this show takes place in like 2071, <laughs> that gives you a stroke because you're just like, so wait, Faye was, Faye was alive in 2020 in the... 50 mm -hmm. years since they decided to do all this crazy shit that is incredibly optimistic <laughs> yeah the 90s really was the last era where we had optimistic timelines for sci-fi no you can still have optimistic timelines for sci-fi you just have to be willfully ignorant <laughs> this is, is cowboy Bebop isn't really optimistic it's kind of a cyberpunk dystopia. I mean, yes, but that that beats a normal dystopia. <laughs> I, I, I mean, technologically, I, I mean, it's, it's not even neg it's not even negative anymore. It's now it's just yeah, yeah, Cowboy Bebop. I could see us like fucking Jeff Bezos is talking about how we have to leave Earth and go to the colonies. I could easily see us being here in fifty years. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's uh, <laughs> but it's it, it still has that that feeling of being retro in a lot of ways, which makes yes, it, it really strong. Like that, the universe yeah. they build is insane. And I, I, I just want to be there more. Like it's kind of yeah. crazy. Yeah. There, there's a lot of really good cassette punk built into the mechanical design. Yes. That too. Yeah, the mechanical designs in this are so good. Where everything is just broken and shitty. And it's like scabbed together with whatever you can find. And it's just so fucking thoughtful. I also like that there's a ton of culture mismatching. Like the, all of space feels like a melting pot. Yes. Mm -hmm. Which is cool as shit. Yeah. Yeah. Every All of space has like every, like every establishing shot is like, yeah, this is, it looks like, um, like the Kowloon walled city almost. Mm hmm. Every, every TV broadcast. All those neon signs and the big and just, just broken. Everything's shitty. I really appreciate, this is hyper-specific, but I really appreciate we get to see the host of the Bounty Hunter show <laughs> act normal by the end of the series. That's yes. really great. It was only on mm. this time watching it, I realized it was him. <laughs> Every other time I was like, this oh, is yeah? not that's awesome. 
which is which is funny oh, because I didn't during, realize that was him. <laughs> during during that scene, I'm like, oh man, I think we pieced that together faster than Faye did. And then by the end of the scene, she still hasn't pieced it together. And I'm like, oh shit, she didn't get it. Because <laughs> that scene always stuck out to me as like a interesting little thing. But it didn't it didn't piece together to be in the level of like, oh, this character from the TV show. It's just, yeah, this is oh, that's a so neat great. thing. Yeah, it's, it's really cool. good. I appreciate the line where she's like, I'm pretty sure, or he's like, I'm pretty sure she's dating her talent manager now. <laughs> yeah, or her agent. Her agent. <laughs> yeah, that's real good. That's really good. <laughs> they do a fantastic job of building out the universe in this. Like every episode on every scale, I feel like, builds it out. You know, Bob? Yeah. Like, I expected it to feel thin by the end, but no. No matter how many times they reuse a vague location, it feels like they've developed it insanely more each time they visit it. Yeah, and every time they're like, we're going to this place. Oh, I know several things about that place and have a general feel for it. Yes. <laughs> That's world building. Yes, and it's really good. <laughs> uh, while watching the movie, I was like, yeah, this is just making me think about how... I don't know, 10 episodes in, 80 episodes in, I was like, this really was like futuristic, almost uh, cyberpunk Lupin. You know, Spike has a strong Lupin-ass energy. They have the crew. It's very funny. Mm -hmm. And they have these episodic things, but like the world they build out is so good. And while watching the movie, I'm like, they really could have, they really could have done more movies. <laughs> yeah. Like, mm -hmm. <laughs> that movie doesn't, like, you could have seen them doing that, but for some reason, they just never did. Which, uh, you know, we can talk about the ending now. <laughs> I'll open this up to that. Uh, yeah. Well, hang on a second. Uh, there's one thing I want to point out about the world building. Sure. So, you, you've got this near-future near sci-fi. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, it's pretty dystopic with, with a heavy Western setting. Uh, and you're you're following like a ragtag group of people who all just sort of accumulated on a ship in a universe where it's like half American spaghetti western, half uh, like Chinese syndicate. Um, yes. W why the fuck isn't this the show everybody makes the Firefly jokes about? <laughs> I've never seen Firefly, so I don't know. Yeah, I've never seen Firefly. <laughs> I've willfully not seen Firefly. <laughs> <laughs> you're like I know who touched it. <laughs> I'm I'm good. Uh, I, I think I've seen people make that joke. No, it's, it's, um, Outlaw Star is the one that always gets. Yes. The Firefly jokes. And I've never understood why it was well, that me, show and not this one. Let me explain. Because everyone knows Cowboy Bebop is a genre unto itself. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes. Also, Outlaw Star is mad quirky. <laughs> well, well, real quick. I haven't seen Firefly. Does it have, uh, cat girls? <laughs> Man. Nope. Okay. Well, a failure is a serious jo clearly. <laughs> Josh Whedon's first draft probably did. <laughs> Fox is like, what does that mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Maybe it's just because like more people who watched Firefly saw Outlaw Star because that was on in the afternoon instead of at night. I don't know. Cowboy maybe. Bebop is like I such a know. such a well known thing. Like it, I feel like it, its presence in culture at that time was so much bigger than that Lost Stars ever was. Oh it, yeah, it, definitely. It's hard for me to remember like the like culture at the time because that was before the internet was like before everybody had high speed internet, so it exploded. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's hard for me to remember. But yeah, I I never saw people compare Firefly to Out Cowboy Bebop. It was always Out Lost Star, and I I also have no idea why. I just always assumed the ship in Firefly had limbs for some reason. <laughs> I'm like that that must that must be it. And they both have they both have ships that have weird arms that hold guns for no reason. No, but curiously the Bebop has a weird arm that they just never use. <laughs> Does it? Yeah. Yes, there's huh. one. It's got it there's folded up on the back. Huh. Yeah, there's one episode where they use it, I think, because cause they, like, duel another ship's arm, if I remember right. Because I remember Jet's ship itself, the, the hammerhead has the weird arm, yeah, so I, I always just associate yeah. that mm -hmm. with it. I'm just thinking of the hammerhead. Yeah, no, the Bebop, it's, uh, it's a fishing trolley, so it's got uh, that big net arm. Hmm. I don't think there's anything more realistic than the uh, the the one episode where the conclusion was, oh, God, I put something in that fridge a year ago. <laughs> yeah. 
I wonder, I wonder what happened. <laughs> nah, the most the most realistic the most realistic moments in Cowboy Bebop are when the characters just pause to have a full conversation with the dog. <laughs> yes. <laughs> That is the most realistic thing I've ever seen in any TV show. It's just like, yeah, that, that, that you, you, if your dog's looking at you, you got to say something to him. Mm. God, you can't, you can't, can't just stare in silence. I always wonder how many purchases of Welsh corgis Ein is specifically responsible for. Uh, I bet it's a lot. Amount, yeah. yeah, it was like near a hundred percent. Agro, I literally know someone who did that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if I owned a dog, you would know, too. Um. Like, like, I'm pretty sure in the last five years. <laughs> yeah. Go going into this show, I had a very, very different image of Faye. Mm -hmm. mm. Where I, I thought she would be not be a complete fucking dipshit yeah. loser failure like the I, other characters. Yeah, oh, no, it. no. I knew it. <laughs> you, you, I was like, he's gonna think that she wasn't a fuck up before fucking yeah, I, getting into it. I, I, I assume she would be a little bit of a fuck up, but I didn't assume it was the level of like, I'm going to eat the dog's dog food while staring dead in its... <laughs> oh. Good, the alarm went off. They're gonna fuck up Faye so fucking bad, it's not even funny. It's gonna be terrible. Yes. It's gonna be the worst it's ever been. It is there is no 100%. way they will Yeah. They will they will not convey the character that can eat a dog's dog food while staring at it and talking shit about how refined she is whilst literally shoveling down dog food. Yeah, they're not even mm -hmm. gonna try to do that. We're gonna end up at some nightmare tier where she's uh quirky. <laughs> Her, her, I, I, just, I just assume her main thing will her main thing will be like kicking guys in the balls. That'll be your thing. That'll be her entire character almost. No. Yep. That, that, that is also my grim prediction. Yeah. I'm so glad it made you set that alarm. Fio was able to shift gears like it was nothing. I was like, man, this is a perfect time for him to bring up Faye's character specifically. Oh. Uh yeah, I uh I'm trying my best to come into the Netflix series with an open mind, but uh a review got out. It's <laughs> I I've tried not to look at those reviews, but it's just watching this. I'm like, American things, especially that have any serious element at all to them, mm -hmm. won't let the characters be fucking worthless dipshits. Yeah, no. Yeah. Like they 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 can't square that circle that someone can be a cool shoot man and still sleep face down in a dog dish. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, there's there's so many every single character in this is that. Just oh, they're they can be almost perfect in combat. The, and then they the get only home and die <laughs> and then wet the bed. The only the only character in this with any dignity at all is Ed. <laughs> yes. I I'm willing to sign up for that sure. I uh I haven't read the review, but snippets made its way to my computer screen. <laughs> And I read that, and uh, I am also confident that uh, Faye is fucked into the ground, salted earth tier of, you really mishandled this. I'm very much looking forward to this Netflix show. Yeah, me too. Um, I hear that comes out uh, uh, 24 hours from this recording the same day this goes out. Oh, no. <laughs> I, uh, I, I was excited until I found out the 10 episodes were an hour long each. Wait, what? <laughs> Whoa. Yeah, of course, Netflix. Jesus. Wow, that, that's oh, my God. That's reframed my understanding yet again. Thank you for this tidbit. Um, so it's 10 hours of Bebop, and I haven't seen Ed once in the promotional material? Yeah. Yeah. It's almost certainly just not in the season at all. It's basically the same length as the show. It, I, I, there's shit from the ending in the promotional material. With the, how do they, you do a second season? Uh, what? So I assume what they're doing is they're rushing to consume all of the cherished content from an IP like everyone does with the reboots and stuff nowadays. Mm. Uh, you know, like that Resident Evil film that's coming out that's one and two. Um, I assume they're doing that. So they're just gonna, they're gonna take, they're gonna take Cowboy Bebop, the entire series, into some sort of like mill and then grind the hole off of it and try to come out with white ass flour. <laughs> <laughs> set the alarm again. We need to go back. <laughs> okay, okay. You know what? I'm gonna set it. I'm gonna set it for five more minutes. <laughs> okay, but before I'm that, 
my favorite thing when I was watching it. You're going, what if they say bang every episode? Yeah. I was like, <laughs> everyone's going to say bang. And that's when I decided to introduce everyone this episode with bang. Uh, but, yeah. You need to make a bingo card. <laughs> uh, my only hope uh-huh. is that the Netflix series reignites interest in the franchise and they go back and make more in some way, like a movie or something. Yeah. A movie w- yeah. A movie would be really good. Mm-hmm. I set the timer for five minutes. <laughs> Thank okay. you. Uh, I really appreciate how much the tone and sort of genre they're going for shifts across this. Uh, Mushroom Samba being uh, some weird uh, black exploitation <laughs> episode is yes. really funny because that dude basically goes, but black dynamite, I sell drugs to the community. <laughs> <laughs> to this day, the moment it, it's, it's some of the best comedic timing in history when, when he's like, do you want to know why I drag this coffin around with me everywhere I go? <laughs> it's so I can put you in it. And there's a beat and a half and the truck hits it. <laughs> yeah, that's really it's good. The greatest dead second in history. <laughs> I, that episode's amazing because we find out that uh, the true villain of the series is, is Ed. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> yes. And she just poisons every one of her crewmates. Yeah, Ed is absolutely a Nazi doctor trying to advance science with that fucking crew. It's terrible. <laughs> She's like, well, I, I saw a fuck up Ein. Time to fuck everybody. <laughs> That'll be funny. <laughs> <laughs> it's not the not the worst thing that's happened to them. There was an episode where they just all died, and then they like that never happened. Don't worry about it. We're gonna move on. <laughs> another th- another thing I didn't expect is the running gag of Spike swallowing things only to spit them back up later, <laughs> which happens like four times. Yep. Yeah. Is that something it, it, Lupin it, does, or is that something I'm making up? <laughs> I I, uh, I don't think I, I'm sure it was probably inspired by Lupin because the whole cast were like made to do specifically like based on them a little bit. So I assume it's like just the same energy. Yeah, I, I think I've seen Lupin do that once, but <laughs> definitely I don't know about. not every five of episode. I mean, it's a sleight of hand thief thing. I'm sure he does it. Yeah. But like when Spike is when 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 Jet's just like you can't smoke in here, Spike. So Spike just swallows the cigarette. Yeah, what are you doing? <laughs> And then he spits it back up later, and I'm like, that seems really overcomplicated. Why'd you do this? It's a cool trick. <laughs> to own they, someone. They make you learn it in the syndicate. Yeah, the syndicate makes you learn that trick. Vicious could have done it if he cared to. I also didn't expect the episode about the epic eco-fascists who have the monkey virus. Yes! <laughs> oh, that episode, I, it left my mind that, until that, we watched that's it. The, that's the episode where I like really understood everybody's characterization. When Spike has this thing of chemical weapon, he doesn't know what it is, and he's just smashing it against the counter as hard <laughs> as he can. He's like, I want to open it. Yes! And then... <laughs> And and the boss of the eco fascist that they have captured is shitting her pants as he takes out his gun to shoot it. <laughs> Twinkle Maria Murdoch is one of the most terrifying weekly villains in any show I have ever seen. That woman is just fucking creepy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, she's terrible. She 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 occurs to me as like a nightmare version of Mom from Futurama. <laughs> mm. <God>. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> Jesus. I now I need to know like the time frame. Like, what was the first appearance of Mom? W- when did that episode air? <laughs> they're I, they're I, really close together, so I almost imagine there was some previous thing prior to both that inspired both. Futurama was like ninety eight. Yeah, there's a strong Cavella Deville energy to her. So ah, uh, okay, mm. they're inspired by the live action movie, the one hundred and one Dalmatians with whatever her name is in it. <laughs> Uh-huh. Iconic. <laughs> yeah, it's iconic. It got a sequel. 102 Dalmatians. It did. She gets, like, baked into <laughs> a cake or some shit. <laughs> Jesus. That episode is also great for establishing, like, this is the gate. This is what the gate does. Yes. That, yes. Does that make any sense? <laughs> Who knows? But it's going to be pretty consistent, and it always looks cool. Yeah, all that stuff where we just get to find out little bits about how this technology works is really neat. Mm-hmm. I'm glad uh, Faye Valentine could beta test it for the rest of us. <laughs> <laughs> I assume that's what the space accident was, but uh, 
Maybe that uh, wasn't the game. It looked like accident. her shuttle exploded. I don't think the, I, the I gate sat there. Was I was I was screaming watching that episode because I'm like, you you sent up a shuttle not full of teachers but full of students. Are you fucking insane? <laughs> At one point, do you go? Oh, we made a real mistake there. Stick students in it. <laughs> oh God. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need to talk about it. It's fine. There's plenty of actual content okay, Bob, from the show. Okay, Bob. Go. Go. Talk. I really appreciate all the old school kung fu movie stuff in this. Yeah, and, and the 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 plane stuff is also incredibly well sought out. Was the way all the choreography around that works. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The the choreography of the air combat is really really good in this. Oh yeah, it's I mean that, that feeds back into the how well thought out all of the mechanical design is the personality of these different ships the way they all look like they were built by similar companies except for the swordfish because it's a weird like race car right i i do appreciate how uh all the mechanical design is uh to me at least it feels set up so that way spike has things to kick <laughs> like it all seems very kickable maybe that's just me i don't know it, it is my favorite kind of space mechanical design where like especially with all like the buttons you can hear like the the fucking ibm switches behind all the buttons where it's all like chunky and overbuilt because we got to ship it to the ass end of the universe so we're only going to build it once there's nobody around to repair this shit so it's got to last forever yeah i really like that the the dome cockpit or the, the sphere cockpit seems to be interchangeable in that they actually release it in that one episode and shoot it out. And it's like, Oh wow. Yeah. Those are, this is really well mm -hmm. thought out of how this would work. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. I was in the middle of appreciating the mechanical design that I realized, wait, this is also sunrise. Wait a minute. The three best looking anime blu-rays are all from sunrise. Yo. They're all that exact era of sunrise. I would love it was a magical time. I yeah. would love to see something that beat it out, but currently my top three, like, this looks amazing on Blu-ray uh, TV series animes. Very important. Because, of course, things like Redline exist. Yeah. Um, but all three of them were, like, Sunrise from that era, so it's like Big O, Gun Wing, and this. They just look yep. exceptional, and it's yeah. kind of nuts. That era launched lifelong 90s anime stands. The only thing that I can think of that could compete are like Madhouse, but they never made a Blu-ray for like Trigun <laughs> and other things from that era. Well, wait, that. did uh, does Ultimate Helsing have? It, it did Ultimate Helsing in No World looks as good as this because it's oh, after okay. it's after their transition to Flash. Yeah, and yeah. it is after they make that look good, but it's still not this. Yeah, yeah I haven't mm. seen Ultimate Helsing in uh, let me check my clock, fourteen years, so <laughs> yeah, something and, like that. And you know that that was spaced out for a while too, because those were like OVAs. Yeah, so it's definitely yeah. cheating because I'm talking about TV series. Yeah, 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 right. yeah, it absolutely cheats where it's like, oh man, there's like one of these a year, <laughs> <laughs> or something absurd like that. Mm. Yeah, I don't know what else would uh look that good but i'm open uh to suggestions if people want to stuff in the comment section some amazing looking blu-rays or uh animes you think might look amazing on blu-ray uh yeah go ahead and throw some su suggestions in the comment section because because man <laughs> <laughs> shit and these three look so good about their zip craft uh and them just flying them around uh densely populated metropolitan areas and having aerial gunfights <laughs> Uh, <laughs> yes the lawlessness in this universe is stunning yes uh-huh <laughs> that like there seems to be a police force and it seems to be pretty well equipped and maintained but they just well like these I, people I, are going into buildings and shooting at felons like they're I, american I, cops just bam 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 I, I just imagine there's like some huge like some neighborhoods of rich white people we never see that the police are just always there and never anywhere else yeah it's gotta be that that there's just domed cities a la big o that we'd never go into or like whole syndicate controlled neighborhoods that are nice because because we never see like any place nice in this whole mm. show the closest is like the casino in episode three yeah which introduces mm -hmm. Faye, but that's a fucking casino right so of course it's lawless for its own reason <laughs> like like every place where people live at best is like this would have been a nice a neighborhood 90 years ago in the 70s <laughs> yeah 
yeah, I think part of that is just it's also just transitions to Hollywood movie logic where it's fine to just go in and shoot people and no one knows. <laughs> like, yeah. It, I'm trying to think exactly the era of of it's it, it's very like dirty hairy esque. Yeah. Hmm. Like a like Cowboy Bebop in general feels like very 70s aesthetically, like space 70s. Mm hmm. So I think it's just that, yeah, there's there's cops, but there's just so much crime. They can't do anything. Right. I, it, the, the way Jet's former co-worker describes it, they aren't even trying. Uh, maybe that was in the movie, though. <laughs> Where he's just like, yeah, no one's no one's actually effectively doing anything at the police department anymore. Uh, uh, there are people trying to get to the top and people who have settled who are just selling all this information to the syndicate. They uh they say that at the end where it's like, yeah, the red the red dragon syndicate's just fucking killing everybody, Jet, and we can't do shit to stop <laughs> we can't them. We're fucking shit useless. To stop them. <laughs> right. Can I can I say that Vicious sucks? Uh okay, why? He's just he's just so nothing. Like I think he has like it's like weird for him to be the dramatic climax of the series because I think he has like ten minutes of screen time across the whole series. Well, he's you see, and, you need to understand and, he's uh, Spike's Virgil. Yes, <laughs> I, I like I I vaguely see it, but it's just, he's just so not transient of an entity in the show. Uh, another thing is I I genuinely thought like I I was stunned when I got to episode five and that thing happened with the stained glass mirror. I had always thought that was the ending of the show. <sighs> mm -hmm. It really has a I'm late in the series or ending of the show energy. Yeah, you think like the, like because because I had seen because I had seen Spike falling with the where the Ballad of the Fallen Angels plays, and, and that yeah. just seems like something that happens at the end of the show. Yeah, it's one of the weird things about watching this on TV back in the day is you were never sure if you were watching it out of order or not when you were watching it one episode at a time. And because you have all these weird like that feels like the end of the series, but oh, wait, no, it's not. You always feel lost in time when you're watching Cowboy Bebop, which I, I feel like might have even been intentional in the plotting of the series to reinforce the whole living in a dream world thing that Spike's going through. That that does seem like it was probably intentional. Yeah, they do a lot of like stuff like that where scenes will mimic each other. Like there's even a scene in um oh my god the the devil the the one with the kid who's immortal. Oh, uh, yeah. There's yeah. a scene near the Sympathy end of that, devil, which yeah. really hits beat for beat with the end of the series. Like mm -hmm. the, the Spike going out to do the final the battle with him is very similar to going out to doing the final battle. Um, yeah. It, and there's a lot of little things like that throughout the series. It's just like, oh, it's like repeating and doesn't feel hackish, but it's just there and it's very subtle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And there, there are like a lot of those dreamlike episodes, like the one with the clown. That just kicks the God. shit out of, kicks the shit out of Spike while doing uh, while doing Smash Bros. Double jumps. Yes, that, that fucking episode would start, and I I changed the channel when I was a kid. I, mm -mm. No, that thing was horrifying. Really? Mm hmm. <laughs> hmm. Every time I watch it, I'm like, this is this is so tonally bizarre. I, mm -hmm. Every time I watch it, I expect there to be more going on in it, but it's. It's super weird because Spike doesn't even find out the deal with the dude until he's dead. <laughs> like, yeah, we yeah. don't find it's, out his, his watchers even. <laughs> it's it interesting. It just sort of wanders into this nightmare. <laughs> yeah. Uh, an episode I think is really good that gives Spike a lot of characterization is uh, Cowboy Funk with the stupid dipshit who pretends to be a cowboy yes. trying yes. to stop the bomber. Fun fact about that episode. Mm -hmm. Um. It, along with the creepy child one, uh, were banned from the original run. Huh. Really? Uh, oh. Because this Whoa. series aired in November of 2001. Oh, so of oh. course where the guy specifically wants to blow up the tallest buildings. Oh. Uh, yeah, like literally you see a double-towered building explode. So we didn't yes, see that episode do. for <laughs> years. Wow. Yeah, I, I, I get it. But the, I, I always like the, the just the touch of like, Spike refuses to eat the fucking canned soup the guy gives them until after he feels like he's won. <laughs> and he's like, now, now I can eat it. Yeah. It's it's really good. Uh, this You get a really good idea for how much of a dipshit Spike is. <laughs> Normally, his stubbornness comes out of his uh, weird game of chicken with death. 
But in this episode, mm-hmm. it isn't with death. It's just with this asshole juggalo. <laughs> like, <laughs> it's just like Spike continually, like you peel back these layers and you see these interesting facets of his personality. And it becomes this deep, complex, you know, very informed by his backstory sort of uh, picture of this character, which is honestly one of the reasons that I like Vicious as the villain. Because he shows up and his whole deal is, I'm Vicious. And that's it. (laughs) That's all he is as a person. He's just in the background being like, I'm vicious and I want to be the strongest. And we're like, that's not interesting. He's like, fuck you, I'm vicious and I want to be the strongest. I stabbed a scorpion once. (laughs) That that was raw shit. Yeah, I I agree with that. Vicious isn't a great character, but he is just one note to such an extent that's hilarious. Yes. Oh, yeah. yeah. He, he's well, a great image of, well, like, this is the kind of thing Spike might have ended up as uh-huh. if he didn't, you know, be a person and get out. Yeah. Yeah, That there is that element that I, uh, and I do like that element. Boy, I sure hope there's nothing coming out where Vicious is in it, like, a hundred times as much. Uh, so about that, <laughs> I, I think if your problem is Vicious is underdeveloped, then the Netflix series might solve that for you. No. <laughs> Would you like to hear about my complicated backstory that I think makes me equally you, sympathetic? You, you know what? I'm going to go with the Faye Valentine approach of don't tell me about yourself. You've never done that before. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I I really appreciate that every time Spike gets to, to Vicious, he basically wins, even though he's gone through a huge gunfight, is almost dead. Mm-hmm. But he usually still basically wins. <laughs> yes, he does. Yeah, he, I don't see how I don't see how leaving a grenade next to somebody's face, even if you get knocked out of the window, isn't a win. <laughs> right. <laughs> Every time Spike is uh, just barely knocking the other person out in Smash Brothers, while they're way too far to make it back to the stage. <laughs> I mean, I mean, I mean, even at the even at the end, Spike has to be all fucked up for Vicious to even have a shot. Yeah, he's like mm-hmm. he gets there with one stock and that ninety percent health. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he, he's missing a fuck. He's missing a fucking eye. He's al- he's already been hurt, and he's still loose. He still wins. As a, as a kid, I always remember just yelling at my TV, "Spike, just go run the Red Dragon Syndicate. It looks pretty cool." <laughs> <laughs> It's great because Vicious is like, I'm so cool. You should let me run the syndicate. And they're like, no, we'll never let you. You're not as cool as Spike. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, My bird's going to blow up now. (laughs) (laughs) That shit was so good. Yeah, the bird is really good. I was like, he's like, "Uh, snake's venom takes time to kill its prey. And then, then the bird perks there and i'm just like that bird's gonna attack them is that gonna be an effective straight explodes and i'm like oh shit <laughs> i like that the bird is Chekhov's gun <laughs> <laughs> i remember the first time i saw the bird i'm like why why does that bird look so familiar uh-huh i swear i've seen that bird before and then you see julia for the first time like oh yep i know where that's all coming from i had actually i don't think like, because I would catch parts of episodes. I think mm-hmm. the first time I saw Julia die was in AMV Hell. <laughs> <laughs> that checks out. Yeah, that sounds like something that would happen to Dan. I'm like, this is this is great. Thank you for this. What was playing while, while she died? Uh, just died in your arms tonight. Must have been something you said. <laughs> I'm sorry. Please continue the podcast. <laughs> Yeah, this is this is a really great series. I wish I owned it on Blu-ray. I don't know why I didn't pick it up. I was probably too busy picking up Big O. But I should pick this mm. up. Uh, highly recommend watching this. Yeah. That one's not hard to get. I feel like I got that on Amazon for 20 bucks. Cool. You know, they you always hear the rumor about uh like, oh, this this one bombed in Japan because it was it was too western, but we we loved it here. <laughs> uh if you look into that, it turns out like we had a couple episodes cut. Uh, Japan had like half the series censored what? for violence. Oh, oh, oh. That, yeah. That must be disheartening to have your work mm-hmm. censored that hardcore. That's insane. Yeah. Well, I guess that might slightly explain things over there. 
Okay, mm-hmm. uh, let episodes that were banned on TV Tokyo. Uh huh. Episode one. What? Episode four. Episode five. Episode wait, wait. six. Episode eight. Episode nine. Episode ten. Episode eleven. Episode twelve. Episode thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Sixteen. Seventeen. Nineteen. Twenty. Twenty-one. Twenty-two. Twenty-three. Twenty-four. Twenty-five. Twenty-six. That's that, not half. <laughs> that's most of the show. That's like five episodes that aren't. Banned. I have. I. I have to assume it was just aired on some other station. TV Tokyo was like a branch of the station. It was like, no, we're not going to show it. Yeah, they eventually get picked up on some other network. That Jesus but it was Christ. it was too late. Yeah, TV scheduling in Japan's a lot more cutthroat over there. <sighs> That's depressing. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no episode one. How did Lost Universe do over there? <laughs> oh my god! Don't talk about Lost Universe. I'm staring at it right now. Okay, so here's here's uh, here, I'm gonna say three animes. Okay, okay. Here, here we go. Outlaw Star. Wait, sorry. Let me start over. Cowboy Bebop, Outlaw Star, and Lost Universe. Now I may have arranged those in a specific order to imply something about quality or something else. Uh, so is this the worst one we just watched? Oh yeah, totally. Cowboy Bebop sucks. Oh, okay. <laughs> I think it would be really funny to immediately just be like, okay, now we watch all of Outlaw Star and then all of Lost Universe. I'm, I'm down to finally understand what Lost Universe is. <laughs> right now. Is, it, is, it Outlaw, <laughs> is Outlaw Star 50 episodes? I feel like it is. No, I, I think it's 24, 26. Yeah, I, okay. think it's, I think it's 24, 26. I think that's right. Yeah, it's roughly the same length as this. Okay, so, so then... Yes, it, it was the same time period, same double core. So then at the end of Lost Universe, you dovetail out of that trench by going into Slayers. There you go. See? Okay. I haven't yeah. seen that yeah, either. That, that's only 180 episodes. That's, that's all. around there. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, you can just watch we, we, Slayer we just season watch one. Next. <laughs> I like how you both just said different seasons to watch as the only one. <laughs> we'll just watch an OVA. <laughs> that sounds good. I'm sure Lost yeah, Universe is good. The movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah, because we need we need um what is her name? Naga? Yeah, Naga. Yeah. You don't get Naga mm. anywhere else. You gotta watch the OVA. Oh yeah, there's no character ever well, that's been uh, uh, sort uh, of I think, spoilery. I think she <laughs> I think she shows up in one of the one of the revival seasons. Te- they technically did. a little kind bit, but of. yes. But, but if you want to see full Naga. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if you want to see the important parts of Naga. <laughs> Genre defining woman. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, what would you say the genre is? Woman? Okay, you've told me more about yourself than the thing you're trying to describe. <laughs> and they shall become a genre unto themselves. <laughs> Boobs. <laughs> Booba. <laughs> Man. Yeah. What a what a what a what a good fucking I love Wea Boomers. It's so good yeah, to get we, to go we, back and watch something that's probably good or really important. Yeah. See you for lost universe. <laughs> Hey, that's where it fits, unfortunately. Oh, no. <laughs> we had such a good run. <laughs> it's got to be good. You have it right next to sliders on your bookshelf. That's exactly where it belongs. <laughs> oh. It's sandwiched between sliders and quantum leap. That is exactly where all three of those belong. <laughs> oh. Somehow, somehow, I think Lost Universe will have less TV ass TV energy as the other two. <laughs> a little bit, yeah. It's it's just insanely dumb cowboy bebop, really, uh, with lightsabers. Ooh, that's raw. <laughs> if you took cowboy bebop, right, mm-hmm. and combined it with Slayers, and then put in like industrial grade stupid, Ooh. <laughs> don't forget to extract the animation. <laughs> Oh no! Yeah, you're adding a gallon of water to this mixture. Yes. Um, uh, this this mixture is uh is a pint. It's 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 quite a lot, you know. <laughs> Are you saying this is the homeopathic medicine of anime? Yeah. Or it's like it's like hey, you can dilute it a hundred thousand percent and it'll still retain all the medicinal value. <laughs> Yo, let's go. Sometimes you want to put a thing on a screen. And just look at it and go, that's anime. <laughs> that's it. There's no other neurons firing. I love anime. Oh, man. <laughs> I, I'm just looking, thinking back on the series. Like, there's so many episodes that could be like, yeah, that's my favorite episode. I know. Like, I was, it's, it's, it's impossible to pick one. There's, was, it, it, it's so full of bangers. I was 
tempted to do a like everyone should pick their favorite episode. But then I was like, oh god damn it, that's a nightmare. Yeah, that is hard. That's really hard. <sighs> god. Yeah. I'm gonna say Stray Dog Struts my favorite episode just because of uh, all the scenes of Ian just walking <laughs> as as like shit happens around the dog. <laughs> peak peak Ein scene is when Ein eats the fucking mushroom. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it just starts hopping. It's so good, the sound. I don't know though. I, I love every Faye backstory episode. They're all really good. Yeah, those are definitely some of my favorites. Which is why I my 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 concern that they've ruined her character for the Netflix series is so severe because I'm like, but that's yep. What if they don't even do the time travel thing no of the way. frozen? That'd be insane. If they were okay. like, we don't get it at all. We didn't do anything. I'm already I'm already pretty <laughs> sure that they're gonna fuck up who she acts like in general. Uh-huh. So to also remove mm-hmm. that, it's going to completely murder me. I'm very excited. Yeah, like Faye's character is is a delicate balance that they managed to strike. Like it's kind of a miracle of how enjoyable of a character she is. Because, like, if you just look at the stat sheet, it's like you've got dresses slutty, gets kidnapped a lot. And you're like, mm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but it works because cause she's supposed to be, like, the sexy femme fatale. But then she gets kidnapped and it's like, it just starts crying and shitting and pissing herself. <laughs> yeah, it's like, and it's like Fujiko was not able to do anything. Uh, yes. <laughs> and was also had no dignity. It's like, no, at least untie one in my arms so I could go to the bathroom. And then they do, and that's how she escapes. Yeah, mm-hmm. I feel like. She's I've, so good. I feel like, yeah, that's the thing. She's Fujiko without any of the competency or, um, like, the whole thing's an act. So the moment it folds, she folds and starts <laughs> screaming loudly and falling <laughs> apart as a person. It's really good. I always wonder if she if she thought it was weird that like all this technology has changed in the time she's been frozen, but like it doesn't seem like anybody's invented any new uh guns. <sighs> no. That it's all just guns that were around when she was frozen. Well, she didn't have to do deal with guns before, so obviously she just wouldn't know. <laughs> <laughs> Look, the future of gun design is just people who are really into Call of Duty. Yeah, I was like, we peaked, obviously. <laughs> I'm sorry. We're, that's how, it. How many, how, how many AK-47s exist in the world? How old are most of them? I know. Well, they're all I feel in like Oregon, this, so. They, they do this fantastic thing in the movie where they have planes from Earth from, like, World War II and shit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and it's like, how the fuck did these get to Mars? And they're like, yeah, they were in a museum. We weren't even sure they fucking flew anymore. And one of them <laughs> crashes in the background as he's saying this. <laughs> I'm like that's incredible. Oh man. Uh personally, this is like the highest recommendation I've given anything we've watched on We Boomers. It's really fucking good. If you haven't seen it, I I definitely cannot strongly enough tell you, hey, go do that. <laughs> Come on. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is one of the best animes ever, and that hasn't changed. Like you keep thinking, like, yeah. No, you're it, it's not as good. As you remember, right. but like no. this time right. I'll go back and right, yeah, and like, even beyond recommend, like this anime is the it's the recommendation anime. It's that like, hey man, do, do you watch anime? Uh, I don't know, man. That's just kind of weird. Oh no 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 no. <laughs> no, I've I've got this one show you should try, <laughs> and this this show hoodwinked and gateway drugged so many poor people <laughs> into being full blown weebs at the turn of the century. <laughs> This is like the most, like, there's a reason Netflix decided to adapt this. Of course. <laughs> I, I have a sneaking suspicion we're going to find out, well, why Why did you do this and then do all, why, why, why? I have a feeling that, I have a feeling there's going to be a lot of whys. Yeah, because this is said. already a show where it's like, the, if you just did it exactly the same right now, it'd be just as relevant. The, you know, this it's is, just as good for the, the Western market. This is a really goofy comparison, but like the characters in Cowboy Bebop like are like American TV comedy characters in the sense of like Tony Soprano almost, where it's like they're just pathetic, but they're pathetic in a way that's very human. Yeah. So yeah. the serious stuff works more. It's it's a lot like um always sunny. <laughs> There's no fucking way they'll do anything like always.
Always Sunny in that show. I, Not they, shit. They should, though. <laughs> they I would should. watch the fuck out of that show. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Why is Jet played by Danny DeVito? <laughs> No! See, see, I was gonna say, yeah, yeah, yeah. We can take, um, we can take Rob McElhenney as uh, Spike. <laughs> I honestly, at least, it would be an inspired choice. <laughs> <laughs> like we're gonna watch this this chunk of a human do swift kung fu. <laughs> you, you know, the, the, this comparison works because the start of the show has the really rem memorable title card, and then the end of Bebop has the really memorable ending card. Mm -hmm. I think there's parallels here. <laughs> you can find middle ground and make the greatest piece of media that has ever existed. <laughs> yes, J J Jet Jet makes uh, beef and peppers with no beef. Uh, they eat milk steak or whatever the fuck horrible thing it is in that show. <laughs> <laughs> oh god i could i could see jet whipping up some sloppy steak uh, it's just steak sitting in a pool of warm water <laughs> <laughs> oh that's even more dire than what he actually makes god this is rough oh um to, to completely uh flee from that mental image um, <clears throat> I wanted to take uh, the temperature of the room here because it's it's been kind of a a long held thing that there is a single worst episode of this show. Oh yeah, and that it is um, uh, let me boogie woogie feng shui. Really? Huh? Yeah. For some reason, that was always bottom. I always liked that one. I don't know. Yeah, that's. Yeah, like so did I. So I I, I wanted to, to 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 get a quick Gallup poll and see if there yeah. was uh Which one was that? Uh that's the one where he runs into a friend who used to work in the syndicate's daughter and they need to figure out what yeah. happened to his friend. Oh. And then Spike and then Spike just calls him a pedophile for no reason. He's really mean <laughs> for no reason. He's just like I think that girl's a little old for him. And I'm like, what the fuck, Spike? <laughs> well no, because like What's girlfriend with you? uh too young for that. Maybe he's got a thing. Uh too old for that. <laughs> I know yeah. that was an unbelievably funny and fucked up line. <laughs> I'm like, man, yeah, yeah. that's that's the crew, all right. They don't give a fuck. I, I, I like that episode, honestly. Like, I think if I had to look, like, what is my least favorite episode? It would probably be Jupiter Jazz. Yeah, I was actually gonna say feels... Jupiter Jazz Part Two. <laughs> I was just like, I don't really give a shit about this character, and it, it, it's part of the vicious backstory that I'm not really into. Except Spike isn't even throwing grenades at people at this one it, it's amazing we got jupiter jazz on tv they they censored the hell out of that yeah wow i i like jupiter jazz from the angle of finding about the war on titan i think that the idea of like a space war that's just in the past and not really that important is really interesting but mm. i do not yeah, it's, more, it's more good world but world building but yeah the yeah, episode two, part two of Jupiter Jazz just feels distended and almost like they just, I mean, they, <laughs> they felt like they had to finish what they set up in the first episode. I mean, yeah, Jupiter Jazz uh, part one sets up a bunch of threads mm -hmm. and then part two needs to solve that. And they didn't really have much more to go. Like, look at what Faye does in all part two. <laughs> yeah. Like they, they, <laughs> they just needed to, you know, dot the I's, cross their T's finish the shit they set up in one and then and then they can add the episode and as such it does feel a little bit less developed mm. and full and interesting than most of the series yeah. i i want to bring up something about this episode mm -hmm. i want to see if anyone else had this experience in the comment section okay when i saw this when it first aired on tv i thought vicious died <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you talked about this yeah i thought that in the, after they had the gunfight in the ships he mm -hmm. flew off towards that other ship and crashed into it because he was on fire and he was just got dead forever <laughs> i was like that's a little weird but okay <laughs> wow <laughs> oh my god uh jupiter jazz part one when when phase you know kicking indoors and and looking um no that's not jupiter jazz i'm thinking of um the the one on venus uh, waltz for venus um i just realized face kicking the doors and she's she's looking for that guy there who who uh is running the gang and she kicks open one door and like there's clearly two people in a bed having sex mm -hmm. yes and you know she she grabs the guy on top and like put puts a gun in his mouth and when we saw that on cable they just blurred and darkened the shit out of the lower person who we at the time all assumed must have been a topless woman 
<laughs> oh, Turns he... out it's just a guy twice the size of the guy on top. Yep. I don't think I had seen that until I watched it this time. <laughs> You know, I didn't. It didn't even stand out to me. But yeah, definitely, like we would. That I wouldn't have seen it on TV back in the day because, of course, I wouldn't have. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. Like it happens, and I was like, "Oh, okay." A- and it didn't occur to me. Yeah, of course they would censor the shit out of that <laughs> fucking yeah. TV back then. It is. It is neat that they're that that this director has always been so like oh, progressive and open to all that sort of thing. Mm. Like it, it does. None of the representation of that feels like dishonest or bad well you know the galaxy brain thing <laughs> just uh you're trying to capture a snapshot of humanity uh-huh right not your fucked up warped view of it <laughs> and that's what i really <laughs> like about this you know we talked about it, it's the cultural melting pot right right yeah i, I appreciate this space is that i appreciate that mm. this yeah. is the furthest thing humanly possible from the sci-fi future that is logan's run where it's like yes everyone's white and this one guy and he's 27 <laughs> like okay yeah it, cool it um it reminds me of like tomino talking about like gundam Gu- gundam uh, what's it called turn a where it's like you put a lot of gay characters in this and he's like yes gay people exist <laughs> Ta-da. shock more at 11 <laughs> has anyone else watched carol on tuesday no 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 i caught the first half of it okay I was just curious. It's the only thing he's done that has a, I feel like a similar setting, even if it's, it's really weird and different. Mm. I didn't even know this existed. I just had to look it up right now. The whole show takes place in like, you know, interesting, uh, rundown sort of, you know, Western crime movie. Then, then you get to knocking on heaven's door and the whole movie takes place in what is basically New York in the forties. If you left a humidifier on, (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> yeah okay that's, that's fair okay, yeah I, I assume it's just a different district of mars we didn't see right this is mm-hmm. in the 40s <laughs> the humidifier's broken it's just stuck on forever now oh no uh i really i really like how much they build it out in the movie uh on an unrelated to how they build out the setting of the movie the intro sequence being a music video with uh rotoscoping is cool <laughs> I really like that. Mm. Yeah, the the movie also just has a ton of great music in it too. Like I, there are certain songs I always associate with Cowboy Bebop, and just was like, oh, that was in the movie, not even in the series at all. Yep, it's mm-hmm. it's kind of crazy. God, that movie looks fantastic too. Like it, it's stellar looking. If you can, if you can get a Blu-ray copy, do it. <laughs> yeah, I'll bet. <laughs> if you can find a way to play a, a Blu-ray copy of some sort. <laughs> physical or otherwise i was was watching it like i don't remember this looking this bad oh my tvs were a lot worse back then (laughs) right (laughs) (laughs) yeah you know weirdly enough we didn't even watch it on the fucking crt no we just didn't Mm -hmm. it looked really great yeah yeah we didn't even need to give it some crt nostalgia we just were like yeah just show me the frames (laughs) yeah show me these beautiful frames nope there's a special effects shot (laughs) Hell yeah, that's what I need. Fucking 480p. Uh, but yeah, I think I'm going to start wrapping it up. Are there any other last comments you guys want to get out before we do our uh, recommendations and whatnot? I thought that was, it was really goofy the one time where they where Spike just holds his breath and jumps out of a cockpit into space. It, it's it's <laughs> so good, though. Yeah, his flotation I, trick's I, real good. <laughs> good. <laughs> I, ho- I hope they do it in the Netflix show and it looks as bad as The Last Jedi when Leia does it. <laughs> One of the first things Bob said while we were watching this relating to the Netflix show was, do you think they'll even have zero G? <laughs> yeah, it's just a question that burnt in my mm. head. Like, that's hard. Will they do it ever? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, if you're asking questions, mm. do you think they will... Uh, try to say it's um try to make spike uh, age accurate or or will they try to match the actor and say no spike's 49 years old in this show yeah, <laughs> yeah i think they're gonna do that one yeah, yeah spike, i think they're gonna do that one oh it's 49 yeah <laughs> i can't get a good read on it from uh watching the trailer for the uh for the show again oh that's cool i i uh you know we're so close now yeah yeah there's no reason to just so just close dive in uh i've never not wanted to watch something so much 
I'm like, I, I, I need to see it one more time because the first time we watched it, it was on IGN's shitty player that had it out of sync. At least when I watch this, the live action Netflix series, it won't feel like the Fooly Cooly sequels because I don't think there's a moral <laughs> touchstone at the core of all of Cowboy Bebop like there is in Fooly Cooly that will get mishandled in the most condescending way humanly possible. <laughs> I also, it doesn't have that stink of it's a sequel. That's true. So it's it not ruining something that exists. It's just like this parallel. It, but, yeah. yeah, it doesn't have that that evil energy of every aspect of that production here. It's oh, it's just another live action thing. Okay, and which you know, add it to the fucking archive. Yeah. I've I've seen almost every live action anime adaptation ever. Hell yeah, that's a good thing to strive toward. It's deeply fascinating. <laughs> it was a great introduction to Bleach. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. We still haven't watched that JoJo's thing. We haven't. It's sitting right over there. Oh my god, we can, yeah. We can do that after this and then compare it directly to the Cowboy Oh Bebop. no! Oh no, the brain worms are setting in. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, uh, before any more things are said about Netflix, uh, we're going to do the obligatory, but this time the most pointless it's ever been probably. Uh, hey Bob, would you recommend people watch Cowboy Bebop? Uh, yeah, no, if... If you have any inclination to watch something, anything, doesn't have to be anime, watch Kawa Yuba. It's great. KZ. Uh, yeah, you should do it in the true order, which is once every couple of weeks, randomly at 3 a.m., but you have to shuffle which episode it is. Dr. Agro. Uh, yes, and I would add, um, don't, don't look at me like that. Stop whining. Watch the dub. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> and Mr. Feel. Uh, yeah, of course. Also watch it both dubbed and subbed. It's a different experience both times. You get to watch it twice. Yeah, no, twice <laughs> the value. I ain't getting that kind of time. <laughs> well, that's going to do it for this episode of We Have Boomers, except this time we have predictions. <laughs> oh, no. <sighs> How many times do you think Spike will say bang in the live action Netflix series? Bob. I'm going to be optimi optimistic. And say two. KZ. Five. <laughs> Mr. Feel. Yeah, I'm going to go with five. Dr. Agro. I'm thinking four. Twice in the first episode, one in the mid-season, and one at the end. Uh, I'm going to go with three. Here's why. It's going to be a thing. He's going to do it twice in one episode. Then that's not going to happen for a while. He's going to do it one more time because they'll be like, yeah, that's fucking terrible. Stop making your character say bang. I brought predictions. Do you want me to read some? Shh. Can I can I go around with a, a couple more real quick? Sure. Okay. Uh, will Faye Valentine have the backstory of being frozen cryogenically in this at all? Bob. I'm going to say yes. <laughs> KZ. <laughs> yes, the effects will look bad. Dr. Agro. Don't make me do this. <laughs> um, no, but she will in one scene be eating a popsicle and make a snide joke about it. Oh! <laughs> this, is, this is the worst it's ever been. <laughs> uh, I'm this, getting a gun. Mr. Feel. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go with no. I, I'm also going to go with no, um, because <laughs> it seems like that might be complicated to recap. And for some reason, even though they have a ton of airtime, maybe they just didn't think it was important. Yeah, my own, my reason for saying yes is that will be their big opportunity to have something filmed in modern day, and they can <laughs> save money by doing that. You're right; Ooh. that lined up perfectly. Oh, 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 I, Bob, I expect them to just not care. I just be like, okay, this this scene was a space battle. Now now it's in a parking lot. <sighs> they spent an entire hour Stop. long episode in the past. Yes. Holy shit! You know what? I'm changing. <laughs> Bob won me over with the. They can save so much money <laughs> by making one tenth of the series them going outdoors. I think you guys are underestimating how much shitty green screen is going to be in this <laughs> yeah, show. Yeah, that, oh. that's that's also my take. <laughs> this series is going to look like the fucking spirit. Oh, oh, oh <laughs> my that? god! Oh my god! See, I assume I assume it's just going to look like a prequel, a prequel, a Star Wars prequel, oh. like the Phantom Menace. <sighs> specifically that's cool yeah it's not gonna look like, that good <laughs> way too specifically it's gonna be like oh no we have to go get this bounty on genoa <laughs> uh okay there's something here more racist than a gungan 
uh, we're gonna we're gonna do one last prediction. Then I'll hand over to Feel for his general predictions. Uh, Bob, what's up? Will there be zero G action set pieces, meaning no gravity floating through ship doing things? I'm going to say they're going to try and achieve it once. That is it. Okay. Fine. We'll do yes, no, and number. Okay. KZ. Yes, they'll do it once really early because that's the thing they had the most time on. <laughs> uh, and about how many? Just once. Okay. Yeah, just once. Just once, okay. but it's like really early. And, and do you, you know, this isn't related to the prediction, but do you think it'll look laughable and that's why they never do it again? Uh, I think it'll just, it, it will look fine. <laughs> okay. It will look, it will look fine, but they only do it once. Cause it's really, really hard. And it's going to be in like the first three episodes. Okay. Dr. Agro. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm with him on that. They're yes. They're, they're going to put a lot of effort into doing it one time for a trailer shot. And then they're going to try to camera trick it every other time it happens. And it's going to look really bad <sighs> or, or be like, uh, they handled that in the other room with the zero. <laughs> <laughs> Off screen. Yep. Uh, Mr. Feel. Oh, uh, yeah, they're going to do it once. Okay, we're all on the same page. They're going to do it once. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, boy. Uh, okay, Feel. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Here's the one that I'm 100% sure is going to happen. Um, uh, they, ca they cast uh, Mustafa Shakir to play Jet Black. They're going to explain, they're going to give him a goofy origin for his name because they're going to have to address the fact they cast a black guy as Jet Black. <laughs> they won't be able to not do it. They're going to have some goofy thing where he has to explain why that's his name or why he uses that as his name. Uh, well, like his superhero name origin, but it's just oh, for, oh man, that's rough. either that or he'll have to, or they'll have to be like, yo, my parents named me after that, something like that. Do you think it, it turns out his real name is Makoto Kusanagi? <laughs> do, you, do you think he'll keep the nickname Black Dog? I have no idea. Okay, you know, I was like, I don't know if they'll remember that part. <laughs> Probably not. Uh, wow. Okay. Uh, Somebody's going to say uh, you're going to carry that weight. Yeah. Like they're, they're they might look directly at the camera when they say it and, the, and then say <laughs> I'm the cowboy bebop back to them. God. I also think they're going to be really lame and just every single bounty in the whole show is somehow directly related to vicious. Yeah. I think that's incredibly likely. Oh. Yeah. Like it'll 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 do the Marvel thing where you can't have anything that's actually an episodic episode. It's all somehow connected to the main guy. Like, yeah, so many things are terrified to actually be episodic. It's it's sad. I'm also worried that we're gonna get like Daredevil esque just scenes of vicious walking around doing nothing, like we got with Kingpin and the Daredevil Netflix show, but I don't I'm not con super confident oh. in that one. You know, he started saying that and I'm like, I don't remember that happening in the Daredevil movie. Right. And then he <laughs> yeah, said the Netflix part, and I was like, Oh right, okay. Yeah, forgot it's, that existed. It's like Evanescence played two songs. What are you talking about? And here's my most toxic one. They have not shown Edward in any promo materials they have specifically not mentioned who Edward is played by like th there's no info mm -hmm. Ed is gonna be the um season two teaser at the very end and will be portrayed by a horrible looking CG version of anime Edward on a computer screen you know, feel while we were watching yeah. an episode, I was like, "Yeah, she's just going to be a VTuber." Yeah, I literally we had that conversation. Yeah, yeah, that's literally what I was thinking of, like VTuber Edward teaser at the end. Yeah, you were like quirky VTuber AI that does all their hacking for him on the monitor, and then, and then I die. I'm feeling a lot better about watching the series. It can't be that bad. <laughs> <laughs> I'm feeling a lot better, be so long as we don't get the scene you described. <laughs> I the <laughs> least thing I joked about is the swordfish wasn't going to be in it. Yeah. <laughs> yes, you did. I don't know if we've seen promotional material that has it or not or yet. God. Well, thank you for joining us for this episode of Wee Boomers. Hopefully that ending there didn't leave you down in the funk. Uh, 
Join us next time where we we don't talk about Netflix on fucking Wii Boomers, hopefully. Hopefully they stop snatching those up. Shit, we haven't talked about you, you yet. <laughs> yep. It's a bet. No, I'm still pretending that that was a Twitter joke. Can we not? <laughs> I'm hoping I'm hoping this will just do bad enough they all get canceled. No, I need more trash. <laughs> I I am too curious what happens with you, like how you translate God that, because it's it. super easy to see how you translate Tabloid Bebop. Hi, my uh, name is Koenma. I'm great- a VTuber. <laughs> <laughs> no! Stop remaking great anime. Just fucking. I want live action Ruby. <laughs> <laughs> The executive producers for this month of Gigaboots are Esme, E. Lee Broyles, Star Falcon, Spaceman Spiff, Red Blaze 27, Brendan O'Sullivan, Live Action Muito Real, Completely Normal Adam, Cooper Tank, Zilter, and Virvarn. Thank you very much to our executive producers and also these pictures. If you want to become an executive producer for an obscure but powerful YouTube channel, head on over to patreon.com slash gigaboots today.